All right, hi. So I just, I'm just i going to be using this little bit of time here to review with you uh, the isotope notation stuff that we already talked about. I just want to make sure that you have a good backing on that and that you can do any of the problems you might have to do. So to begin with, uh, a few things. First, just quick review. Remember we said that the mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So the, sum, the mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. The masses of the proton and the neutron are both 1 AMU. The relative mass of the electron is 0 AMU. The symbols, you know, proton is this symbol, neutron is this symbol, electron is that symbol. That's generally what you're going to see right So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a couple of examples, a few more, and just you know, go over them with you, and then hopefully that'll make it clear as far as how you're going to do all these. So... Let's start out. The goal of this stuff today, it's really simple. We're just figuring out how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons there are in different elements or different atoms. That's all we're doing. So let's say that we have, uh, let's say we have aluminum. So we have Al, aluminum. Now, aluminum, uh, it's got an atomic number of 13, and let's say it has a mass number of 27. So to begin with, you see that and you're like, all right, so we've got our we've got our mass number, we've got our atomic number. Now remember the way this isotope notation stuff works, the top number is the protons plus the neutrons. The bottom number is simply the protons. Okay? So in this case for aluminum, top number is protons, neutrons, the bottom number is protons. So if a question is just simply going to say, like, how many protons do you have, how many neutrons do you have, and then how many electrons do you have? And we can even put the little symbols there to make it perfect if you want. So, well, protons is easy. That's 13. And you could look that up without even knowing anything else, because you can just say aluminum, it's 13. Simple as that. Now, the neutrons. If we've established that the top number is the mass number, that's protons plus neutrons, the bottom number is already the protons, that's just a subtraction problem that's already set up for you. So you just do 27 minus 13, and you end up with 14 neutrons. Finally, uh, the electrons. Now in this case, this is not an ion. So this is not an ion. Now, what that means, that means there's no charge written anywhere here indicating, like there's no, you know, 3 plus or 2 minus or any of that. Like, that's not there. So it's not an ion. So you simply then just say, if it's not an ion, that means the protons are equal to the electrons. That means that the positive charge is equal to the negative charge present. So you would just say, oh, if you have 13 protons, you have 13 electrons. They're the same. Simple as that. All right, so in, in the end, if it's not an ion, the protons and the electrons, they add up to be the same number. Right. But let's say that you have one that is an ion. So let's do another one that is an ion now to show you just, you know, cover all the bases. So let's do... Uh, Let's do phosphorus. So, phosphorus. Phosphorus, uh, let's set up this one. So there, this is an ion. I know it's an ion because it has this negative 3 charge. The negative sign is written after the 3. That is correct. It's not an error. That's just how it's supposed to work. So if you're asked, okay, find the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons for this now. So first, the protons, that's pretty simple. That's just 15. Again, we know that because that bottom number, that's the atomic number. That's the protons. Subtraction problem you do between the two of them is just 31 minus 15. That gives you 16 left over. 16 neutrons. Now, the electrons, this is the part that can be a little confusing. I'm going to try to tell you the really simple way to figure it out, though. So, 
if if you have a negative three charge, all right, that implies that you have more negatives than positives. So you have three more negatives than you do positives. So that means that there are three more electrons than there are protons. So the simplest thing to do is just whatever this is, just do the opposite. Just do the opposite of that charge. So if it's a negative, you're going to add 3 to the protons. So if it's negative, you're going to do 15 plus 3. That means you have 18 electrons. So the reason I did that is because, again, we need to have more electrons than protons. So if you think about it, it's like, okay, I've got, if you want to do it a more complex way, you can set up a math problem. You can say, okay, I have to have 15 plus blank equals uh, negative 3. So 15 plus what equals negative 3? Well, the answer, the only thing it could be is negative 18. So that's why you would have 18 electrons with electrons being negative. All right, now let's do a quick positive example. Let's say I have, um, let's say I have magnesium. So I've got magnesium. It is uh, 12, we'll say 24, and it has a plus 2 charge. So if we want to do the peony here, the protons, neutrons, electrons. So Protons is 12. Neutrons is also 12 because 24 minus 12. Now the electrons in this case, it's a plus 2. That means that we're going to do the opposite. We're going to subtract. So we're going to do 12 minus 2. That gives us 10 electrons. The reason it's 10 in this case, it makes sense because this is a positive 2. It means there should be two more protons than electrons. So that's the correct value then. Now, one final thing that I want to explain just really fast is what you would do if you had something written. Let's say you had something written like this. Let's say it will keep it simple. We'll just do carbon. So let's say you had carbon 12, because you might see something written like this. This is not isotope notation. It's like a little bonus. It's another way you write isotopes are written. So let's say that you have uh, that you have carbon 12. First, this number here, this is the mass number. This thing here, this is a dash. That serves no purpose. A lot of kids get this confused and think, oh, that's a negative sign. And it's like, no, it's a dash. It's just, it just serves no purpose. So if you know carbon and you know the mass number, you can write out, you, you know a lot about this already. So you know the protons for carbon. You might not know it, but you can look it up. And you can be like, okay, carbon should have six protons. All right. Now the neutrons. If I know my mass number is 12, remember that is protons plus neutrons. So if I know my mass number is 12, I know my atomic number is 6. Subtract the two, six neutrons. Oh wow, this is a, this is an interesting problem. And then you uh, you know you do it again, and you're like, okay, how many electrons do I have then? And you're like, oh well, there's six electrons because your protons and your electrons, they're the same if there's not an ion. And when it's written like this in this setup, it's not going to be an ion. It, it would be written differently in isotope notation if it was going to be an ion. So that's that's pretty much the basics here in terms of how to write stuff in isotope notation.